All right, we're out here. We're going to be doing some long range shooting, uh, not super long range, just a few hundred meters. But we brought with us two different weather stations. One of them here is the Castrol. So this is sort of the industry standard for gathering uh, environmental data. Uh, it also has a applied ballistics app built into it. So it'll collect your data and give you a, a shooting solution right from this device. The other one is our Amazon device that we bought. Uh, it's about 50 bucks. What we're doing out here is we're gonna, we're gonna test out the Amazon tool against the Kestrel to see uh, if we can get you some shooting data that stacks up against the industry standard here. Uh, so the Kestrel is sort of like an all-in-one device. It's gonna get your environmental data, like your precipitation, um, temperature, barometric pressure, your wind speed. And you build a, a gun profile into this. So you tell it what gun you're using, your barrel, your ammo, all that type of stuff. Um, and it solves your, your ballistic corrections for you. So it'll tell you uh, where to dial or hold on your elevation as well as your windage. And uh, it's basically, you carry this one device with you. And as long as you know, or you can figure out what uh, distance your target is, you're gonna be able to hit your target with the corrections off of this device. This is the Amazon weather station that I bought. Um, it's, it's much cheaper than a Kestrel, but it still collects all the environmental data that we need. So your humidity, temperature, barometric pressure, that sort of thing. It'll measure our wind speed for us as well. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, there's no applied ballistics loaded into this. So it's not gonna do a, a shot correction. We have to manually enter this into an applied ballistics app that we have on our phone. And then we're gonna determine whether or not uh, that measurement that it's gonna give us is accurate. All right, so we're testing out the, uh, the Amazon weather station here. Uh, just taking our wind reading. Um, I'd say it's about four miles per hour on average. Temperature, uh, 47.3 Fahrenheit. Relative humidity, it's giving me uh, 70.3. Uh, 990 for HPA, and then altitude, uh, 195 meters. So it'll give me a shooting chart and um, yeah, I'll get down behind the gun. We got two targets out there. And I'll take a couple of shots at each and see if uh, if the data is correct and if I can make my hit. So we saw the the splash on the first target there with our uh, correction, uh, based on what the shooting app is telling us. Uh, it looked to be about a mil low. Now we're gonna be using the Kestrel. We're gonna get our shooting data off this and we're gonna see how it compares uh, with the corrections on our scope. Um, see if it gives us the same data or not and see if we can shoot and get a first round hit off that data. Right now we're setting our uh, distance for the first target. Downward slope is 60 degrees, 350 meters for the distance to target. Once that's in, uh, it's gonna let us capture the wind and it should just give us our uh, ballistic solution right now rather than having a you know, capture it on this device and put it into something else. Or the outputs that we're getting for our, uh, our holdover and our wind correction are uh, a little bit different for this. We're gonna shoot it and see uh, what we can do. Uh, looks like for that one, we were still just low of the target. Uh, but the other, the left to right was like dead on center. Both the, uh, the Kestrel and the Amazon were giving different readouts. So, you know, 350 meters, almost 500 meters. Uh, we're going to get uh, different trajectories from our bullets. The applied ballistics app on the phone was given different from the applied ballistics app on the Kestrel. Also, we, we used a our GPS has a range finder here rather than using an actual range finder to range it. And the, the look angle was based on what we could use uh, from the phone app. The, the Kestrel doesn't have the ability to really uh, gauge the look angle of the rifle. Uh, so we're probably gonna have to do more testing and, and see how we can get these, these two sets of data to match up and uh, what's needed to, to make these uh, Amazon devices work. But the, the Kestrel, um, based on what I saw uh, for the impact on the first target uh, was definitely closest. All right, we came back out to the same spot again. We brought our uh, Amazon wind meter and our Kestrel. We're gonna redo the same test to see if we can get the same shooting data. But uh, we brought another important piece here. We brought a laser rangefinder. 
that we're going to use that to get the correct distance to a target as well as the correct shooting angle. That way we're going to make sure both of these devices as well as the app that we're going to be using for shooting are going to get the, uh, the correct measurements for the inputs. First, we got the weather readings from the Amazon weather station and the Kestrel. We compared these two side by side to see what data they were giving us. We got a small difference in humidity, but nothing major. The temperature for the Amazon device was telling us that it was much hotter outside than we knew it actually was. The wind speeds were showing a bit different. The Amazon device seemed to jump around, so we took an average. The altitude was a bit off between the two. Our barometric pressure was almost the same. We loaded our rifle, scope, and ammo information into the Applied Ballistic app. We then input the data from our Amazon wind meter and rangefinder to give us our shooting solution. Our first target was 350 meters. The Kestrel gave us practically the same elevation adjustment, but the wind was a bit different as the Kestrel was live updating. We used the Amazon data first, and it was close, but a bit off. The Kestrel windage was more accurate to put us on target. At the distance we were shooting, the 0.1 mil difference was equal to 3 centimeters or just over an inch on the target. We were easily able to get rounds on target at this range. Our second target was ranged at 475 meters or 520 yards. Again, we only had a 0.1 mil difference which translated to 1.85 inches or 4.7 centimeters at the target. We shot with the Amazon data and then the we were able to get on target by spotting the splash of the rounds. Finally, we used our data at 918 meters and 984 yards. The adjustment difference was a lot bigger here. 8.2 mils versus 8.5 mils meant 30 centimeters or almost 12 inches at that distance. The changing wind also didn't help. That's insane. Unfortunately, we didn't spot any rounds close to the target with the same data and at this distance. We were having difficulty seeing the trace. All right, so testing both of these devices out again, the weather's a little bit different. The Amazon and the Kestrel were pretty close for some of the measurements they were taking, but obviously the Amazon was a little ways off as far as temperature there, showing 40 degrees and then finally setting down to 30 degrees, uh, the reading that we were getting uh, while we were shooting. So the Kestrel was definitely more accurate, we would say, for the temperature, but as far as uh, the wind speed, uh, barometric pressure, humidity, they were pretty close and the data we were getting out of the ballistic app was pretty close between the Kestrel and the, uh, the app. So for shorter distances, I could say that we'd definitely be able to use um, one of these devices, you know, just to get you going and shooting to kind of get you to understand how things work. And then when you're, you're ready later on, if you want to start poking out to longer distances, uh, be really handy to pick up one of these Kestrels. But there's, uh, there's much more stuff you can buy, ammo, training, uh, that sort of thing to, to get you on target a little bit better.